why the African-American DNA is so unique. Over generations, African DNA has endured admixture with genes from other continents ever since millions of Africans were forced to leave their homes in West and Central Africa. As African Americans tried to preserve their cultures through food, music, language, and spirituality, genetic tools like admixture mapping, mtDNA, and yDNA have now helped African Americans reconnect with their lost origins. What did the analysis of their DNA reveal? And why is their DNA so unique? The History of Genetic Admixture in the United States For hundreds of years, the United States was a crossroads where people from very different parts of the world ended up mixing. Native Americans were already living across the continent, but then came Europeans, first explorers, then settlers, and eventually Africans, most of whom were brought against their will through the transatlantic slave trade. This mixing of people wasn't something that could have happened easily before the 15th century. Back then, ships weren't built to handle the strong ocean tides, so it was nearly impossible to sail between continents. But once the Europeans improved their shipbuilding, especially with inventions like the caravel, they were finally able to navigate the Atlantic. Portuguese sailors were some of the first to venture out, and by the 1600s, Tens of thousands of Europeans had sailed to Africa to take part in the growing slave trade. While it's often said that Spain and Portugal led the charge, sailors and explorers from England, France, and the Netherlands played a part in the colonization of the Americas. That early chapter in history was a chaotic international effort to explore and profit from the New World. As Europe pushed further into the Americas, this global connection kicked off something called the Columbian Exchange. Named after Christopher Columbus, this was about a full-on swapping of life between the old world and the new. Europeans brought animals like cows, horses, and sheep to the Americas, and in return, they got things they'd never seen before. Tobacco, potatoes, tomatoes, and corn. These food crops ended up changing diets all over the world. It wasn't just about food. The Americas also became the source of massive gold and silver exports especially from Spanish colonies, which fed Europe's growing wealth and also made its way into trade networks with Asia, like the booming market for Chinese porcelain. Sugar, cotton, and tobacco quickly became cash crops that reshaped global trade. But underneath all that economic exchange was something darker. The forced labor of enslaved Africans, whose suffering and labor made much of that wealth possible. This is called the transatlantic or the Atlantic slave trade. The truth about the transatlantic trade. Africans had been taken as slaves and sold to parts of Europe and Asia for centuries. Meanwhile, the trans-Saharan slave trade was thriving as Africans were being sent across the desert into North Africa and the Middle East for over a thousand years. By the mid-600s, Muslim caliphates were even making deals like the Bac Treaty which required African kingdoms to deliver hundreds of slaves every year. This long history of African slavery doesn't take away from the horror of the Atlantic slave trade, but it shows how global and deeply rooted the system of slavery really was. What made the Atlantic version so devastating was the scale. Millions of people were taken from their homes, families were destroyed, and entire cultures fractured all to fuel a new world economy that was built on exploitation. The brutal journey known as the Middle Passage didn't just steal their freedom. It erased names, languages, tribes, and identities. Over 400,000 Africans were brought to what's now the United States, and once they arrived, they were no longer Yoruba, Mende, Igbo, or Capelli. They were simply labeled Negro slaves and put together with others from completely different ethnic backgrounds. But despite the dehumanization, many tried to hold on to the pieces of their old lives. They preserved parts of their culture through food like okra and rice dishes, and through music which carried the history of West Africa. Drumming patterns, spirituals, and call-and-response traditions eventually evolved into blues, jazz, gospel, and even hip-hop. Language also carried traces of the past. African-American vernacular English didn't appear out of nowhere, but out of combining African speech rhythms with English. Even spirituality held strong. 
African practices mixed with Christianity to form traditions like Bodo, Santeria, and root work, all holding on to the belief that ancestors still watched over the living. What DNA testing revealed about African American DNA. In more recent years, DNA testing has opened a door that many thought was forever closed. The first major step happened in 1990 during the New York African Burial Ground Project, when scientists examined the DNA of over 400 people buried in a long-forgotten cemetery for black New Yorkers. They compared the DNA to samples from people in the West and Central Africa and found strong connections to countries like Benin, Nigeria, Mali, and Sierra Leone. And this was just the beginning. The numbers could have been even greater if more regions like Ghana, Angola, or Liberia were included. As science improved, more African Americans started turning to DNA tests to get a clearer picture of where their ancestors came from. In 2003, African Ancestry Inc. was created to help fill that need, giving people the chance to trace their roots. Other companies have since followed, creating competing databases and testing methods. While the process isn't perfect, it's helped thousands feel connected to their African roots and reclaim pieces of their history that were once violently stripped away. Genetic studies have revealed that most African Americans have a mix of DNA from Africa, Europe, and the Americas. And the balance of those ancestries can change a lot from person to person, and even from region to region. Some may carry low amounts of Native American ancestry too, depending on where their ancestors lived or who they lived alongside. Thanks to newer studies using high-powered DNA tools, scientists can now get a much clearer picture of a person's ancestry, even revealing very small traces of where someone's distant relatives came from. These studies have shown that there's a huge range in how much African and European ancestry individual African Americans carry. Some may have mostly African roots, while others have a larger European influence in their genes. The Genetic Influence of European and Native American Ancestries When it comes to European Americans, many genetic studies use them as stand-ins for European ancestry in general. But the truth is, European American is not one solid group. It's a mix of people from many different European backgrounds, and their genes reflect that. Even more surprising, some studies have found that many European Americans actually carry small traces of non-European ancestry, including African, Native American, or even Asian genes. These findings haven't always been consistent because different studies use different methods, but they all point to the fact ancestry in America is more combined and diverse than most people think. For African Americans, Earlier genetic studies were limited by small sample sizes and not enough genetic detail. Many studies also relied on narrow methods, like just looking at mitochondrial DNA or Y chromosomes instead of analyzing the entire genome. That's starting to change now, but there's still a lot to find out. One of the most common stories passed down in American families, especially in African American and European American homes, is the idea of having Native American ancestors. People often talk about a great-grandmother who was Cherokee or a Creek, and in some places, it is such a common story that it feels almost like a shared cultural memory. But when people take DNA tests, their stories don't always line up with the results. Many find that they have only a very small trace, or none at all, of Native American ancestry. This doesn't mean the stories are lies, though. Culture and identity go far beyond what just shows up in your genes. Even with that, DNA testing has made it clear that Native American ancestry is still present in many African Americans, although the amount varies a lot. Most carry less than 1% Native ancestry, but in some places like Oklahoma or parts of the Southeast, it can be higher due to historical ties between black communities and Native tribes. What all of this tells us is that genetic ancestry often confirms what we already know from history, but it also adds depth to the story, challenging old assumptions and showing just how connected and diverse our origins really are. If you enjoyed this deep exploration of the African-American DNA, transatlantic slave trade, and how African-American DNA reflects a mix of African ethnic groups, then hit the like button. 
to stay updated on more ancient history and recent impressive DNA analysis on these ancient people, subscribe to our channel so you don't miss our next videos.